Merry Christmas and or happy non-denominational holiday. Whatever floats your boat. That's right, it's that time of the year again. YouTube Maker Secret Santa. <laughs> it's not actually Christmas yet. I'm filming this ahead of time. If the excitement in my voice changes throughout this video, either Christmas has gotten a lot closer or it's these new skinny jeans, which might have been a little too optimistic. There are 12 maker style channels this year and we make something for each other. We're randomly assigned someone to make a gift for, but none of us know who we're getting a gift from, just who we're gifting to. That's the secret Santa bit. But we're not allowed to spend more than a hundred dollars. God knows where I'd get a hundred. So I dug around the shop and I think I'll use this. Looks pretty nice, doesn't it? I can hear you laughing at me, but I'll have you know that this is fancy stainless steel. Not that regular stuff. Last year, I built a thing for Colin Furs and got a thing from Alan Pan. Check those videos out if you haven't seen them. Otherwise, this video will make absolutely no sense. We're building for Xyla Foxlin. <laughs> and that's where the problem started. You see, Xyla's gotta be one of the most diversified makers I've ever seen. It's hard to get a fix. Woodworking, electronics, rockets, flamethrowing greeting cards, electronic woodworking greeting rockets. I'm telling you, it's wild over there. So I thought on this a while and came up with the perfect gift idea. Absolutely choice for Maker Secret Santa. I'll build her a canoe. That's right, a canoe. I went ahead and I ordered an entire truckload of cedar and she's already got a canoe. Although, if she's got a canoe, surely she'll need a... Dang it. Well, I've got a lot of cedar on my hands. Oh, I could make her a corset. Yeah, you guessed it. My wife slaps me up the back of my head. Not to mention, Zyla owns a gun, or at least knows how to use one. But you know what I haven't seen? A knife. Calm down, calm down. I mean, who hasn't gotten a knife for Christmas? But humor me a minute. Just think about it. With a knife, you can do just about anything, especially in the hands of someone like her. Full day of carving a fully functional space shuttle out of red oak. To use the knife to turn off the shop lights, head into the kitchen and use it to make yourself some dinner. Tired and trouble of getting out of bed the next morning because you're all caught up in the sheets? No, with a knife you're not. And what if, God forbid, she gets into a knife fight? Is she prepared for that? After all, you're not going to get very far in a knife fight with a... No, no, hold on a minute. A canoe paddle might actually be pretty good. And that's where this humble piece of stainless comes in. Way less than $100. It's a win-win for everybody. Except maybe Xyla. Now, if we're talking shop here, and frankly, I don't know why you're watching if we're not talking shop here, this is Sandvik 12C27, Swedish stainless steel. That's right, not only do the Swedes provide the world with some of the best fish, they also make a great stainless knife steel. Unfortunately though, I don't have enough to make an easy knife. So we'll be making a folding knife. Surprise number two, I've never made a folding knife. All right, to any knife makers that might be watching, I apologize. You might wanna change the channel right now. But to everyone else, let's get started. Whoa, whoa, hold your horses there, cowboy. I'm starting to wonder if I haven't gotten in over my head here. A folding knife is a great project, sure, but with Christmas and Xyla and all, it's a lot of pressure. However, I have owned a couple of folding knives in my time, at least two probably. And I remember skimming through a lot of knife magazines as a kid. If memory serves, a solid first step would be to head over to the bandsaw and cut some parts out freehand. Although I think it's absolutely wonderful that a bunch of strangers from all over the world can come together to make gifts for each other, I think the real Christmas miracle here is slotting all three parts out of some 12C27 without breaking this tiny end mill. Here are the parts. Granted, the design evolved just a bit on my way over to the bandsaw, but we'll get into those details shortly. I did want to do a whole dramatic build-up kind of a thing. 
how we got here, the whole comedy of errors. But who are we kidding? You already saw the thumbnail. Technically, you know how this thing turns out before I do. You may recognize it, but this is the sharp cutty part, sometimes known as the blade. Still needs finishing, not very stabby just yet, but you just wait. This here is the spring, thing that keeps the knife open or closed, you know, depending if that punk decided to mind their own business. And this is just a little filler piece. Typically, these would be one part. The spring would have this lobe at the bottom. It sort of fills out the bottom of the knife, gives it some additional tie points to the body. But as things go, it got complicated. In a minute, we'll get into why this looks the way it does, why it's split this way, how it's meant to do its thing. But for now, let's just hope it works. If you're wondering why these parts are black or blackened, they've been heat treated, hardened, oil quenched, and tempered in the fires of Mordor. I did a bite test and best I can tell there's somewhere around 55 Rockwell. 54 maybe? I would have liked something a little bit higher. I think this steel requires like a cryogenic freezing type step to get the maximum hardness, but 55 should be fine for this knife. This part hasn't been heat treated because it doesn't need to be. And these are the liners. I think they're called liners anyway. The skeleton of the knife, if you will, keeps all the other parts together. If all goes well, it should look a little bit like should look a little bit like this. I cut these out of some thin brass, mostly for the color and contrast to the steel. A touch of class, perhaps, and made them just like the other parts, freehand on the bandsaw. Hopefully this wasn't wishful thinking, but I took a minute out to engrave these. Everything is still rough, a little hard to see maybe but I added Xyla's initials on the blade and wrote my life story on the inside of the liners. Once assembled, this text is likely very hard to see, but it's there and that's what counts, right? Next comes the hard part, but hopefully the fun part. I need to make scales. These are just the soft, squishy bits of the inside and I need to make the handly bits you touch on the outside. How they look will pretty much set the whole tone of the knife. And I've been thinking about this since I dreamt up this harebrained idea. I know what you're thinking, classy knife for a classy dame. The scales should most certainly be ivory, right? Or maybe whalebone. Oh, 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 rhino horn. Now as a hobby machinist playing in a cold garage on the weekends, I totally stock all of that stuff. But you know what I learned? Xyla, well, Xyla plays the violin because of course she does. And this shape you've been looking at is sort of violin inspired. It's supposed to be that classy sound hole shape you see on instruments. Don't know if I'll be able to pull it off, but that's the idea. I've taken some liberties with the shape because, you know, it'd be nice if she could actually hold the knife. But anyway, the scales. Violin inspired, so it makes sense to make them out of wood, right? So let's do that. Let's head back over to the... I know we settled on wood, but this was a tough one. I went through a few iterations before I got to these buttes. I started with this darker wood, thinking it'd look best up against the brass liners. Nice contrast and all. I don't remember exactly what it is. I want to say African walnut, maybe? All I can tell you is it smells like poop when you cut it, which I know would have been a total bonus. But the darker grain inside, it seems too busy, too serious. Yeah, I don't know what, I didn't like it. So I went lighter. As I was cutting and finishing this, I thought this was gonna be okay. I thought we had our winner, but it isn't. First, it has no smell when you cut it. It's closer, it's better than this one, I think, but still no cigar. It's got this ray fleck kind of thing going on, whatever they call it. And again, it's just too much visual competition. Not to mention both of these gives me weird grandma furniture from the 70s vibe. So defeated, I got to wondering what wood violins were made of. There's really no way to know though. But there are two types of knowledge in this world. There's knowing something firsthand, then there's knowing how to not have to know it anymore. Cut to the chase, I went out late one night, got a violin, and broke it down for wood. You'll never believe it, but there's this kid down the street owns a Stradivarius. 
Okay, okay, I know what you're thinking. A Stradivarius? That's way over budget for this project. But settle down. I stole it. I had a little slip up at the grinder. My intention was to do a full Scandinavian grind because it's Swedish steel. Stir up a little drama, which is just a single bevel. That's what I personally like, and I think it's more fitting for a maker style knife. Something that could see a lot of abuse. However, I took this bevel up higher than I intended to. So it's a longer bevel. It's getting closer to this cutout than I'd hoped it would. Like I said, blink of an eye at the belt grinder, and I had to take it up on both sides. Now what that means is Zyla will end up hating my guts when she needs to sharpen this thing, because that is a lot of material to take off. I mean, granted, it's not a big knife, but relatively speaking, for a knife this size, well, it's a lot to hone down. So I think I'm going to add a small micro bevel. Still great, just a little different, and should be easier to sharpen. The metal parts are cleaned up-ish. Still need a little bit more work. To be honest, that bevel really needs a good finish on the belt grinder, but I've got my spidey senses tingling, telling me not to push my luck. Still isn't fully sharpened. The parts need just a little bit more cosmetic work. But for now, I think I'm gonna start with some assembly. I'm going to bond the scales to the liners, basically just epoxy those on like that, like that, and kind of fit everything up. Trim them to size, give them a little bit of a polish. Everything from here on out is a little scarier for me just because the wood is now involved and I've got to keep things super clean. If I touch this with my dirty hands, that may never come out. So I'll epoxy this, let that dry. We'll put it all together, see how it works. Speaking of how it works, I thought it'd be smart to set up a bit of a dry run. See if it does what I expect it to do. The spring force feels good. It's a little crunchy, but I think that's just because I just hammered these pins into some wood. Hopefully with a little cleanup and a drop of oil, that should do all right. And not to get all Dr. Professor on you guys, but a design choice was made here in this sort of FS shape, this sound hole shape thing, where I'm missing a big chunk out the back. And because of that, if I did a traditional spring, or what I'm calling a traditional, a one-piece spring, this whole backside would sort of flex in your grip when you're opening and closing the knife. So what I did was split them. You see they sort of jog around that opening that's created in the back. In doing that, if I were to pin this spring where I had space, it becomes too short of a spring. The force goes through the roof and I could risk breaking it. So I've got, I don't know what you call this, a compound spring. Both sides of this beam are contributing to the spring force. When this bends outward, this bends inward. It sort of rolls around that point at the bottom. That's the theory anyway. Like I said, I don't exactly know what I'm doing here, but it seems to work. That hole there is for a pin that will be hidden between the scales that keeps the edge of the knife from bottoming out on the clockwork. Fingers crossed. OMG. Thank you so much for rushing over on such short notice. I know I sounded like a lunatic on the phone, but we have a serious problem here. I have the rough scales bonded and I hate them. These won't do it all. Can you see this? That might be hard to see, hold on. There, I've wet one a little. Hopefully you can see those details a bit more. So on their own, they're not too bad. Like they feel about right. Sure, the edges still need some rounding, but not too bad. However, if I build up the whole stack, wow, that is just awful. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? All of a sudden they look terrible, like chunky. No offense, but frankly, these are now the knife equivalent of that grade school ashtray you made your parents for Christmas. <sighs> Not a lot of time left to be dealing with these kind of surprises. Normally this wouldn't be the end of the world, Bad day, sure, but not the end of the world. Problem is I have no more of this brass. This actually might be bronze. No more of this stuff. The wood is very firmly bonded to it. Wouldn't be a great time trying to separate that. I have been thinking about putting them back on the bandsaw. These pin locations should be pretty good, but man, that would be scary. I think I'm just gonna have to shape these by hand. Nothing doing. I'm gonna lose this engraving. It's unfortunate, I kinda like that. Oh, looking at it now, that would've been a nightmare to finish. All right, Xyla Knife 2.0 it is. 
this is gonna hurt me a lot more than it's gonna. All right, I think I'm happy with this, or happier anyway. I lost a bit of the bling, but I think in return I picked up a smidge of elegance. Since this surface is now featureless, I thought I'd bring the pins up to the surface. Again, we'll be all brass pins to sort of match the liner here. These smaller ones are actually silicon bronze, uh, TIG welding wire. And as scary as it is, I think the next step is to put this together. My very first folding knife. Is it perfect? Are the grinds symmetric? Are the handles flawless? Well, yes. Yes, they are. Honestly, this thing probably needed another couple of hours of work. For some reason, when you close it, it's not as snappy as it used to be. I mean, frankly, it's not snappy at all. It doesn't look like it's touching anywhere. I'm not sure if I peened one of these pins. I don't know. Maybe I got a little overzealous. But they're all at the back. Maybe there's something in there, it just needs a good cleaning. Is that my 10 millimeter socket down there? I don't know, I'll clean it up a little bit more, drop of oil perhaps, try to make that better. I was saying it could probably use a little bit more work, but I'm out of time. I have to ship this now. However, it is totally functional and hecka sharp. First, my friends, the paper test. According to my YouTube contract, if I ever make a knife, I'm contractually obligated to show you said knife shaving hair. Wait a minute, wait a minute. If I do this, I'll have people asking questions all the time. No one likes questions. So instead, I offer you this. This is a piece of 316 stainless. It's an inch, maybe by 3 eighths. Let's see how it does. For my grand finale, the test of all tests for a knife, it's arch enemy, the tomato. I've had this thing in my pocket since I started making this knife. I'll be honest, after going through this stainless, I'm a little nervous, but let's see what happens. Okay, not that kind of knife. Whoa, did you see? Hopefully I've made my case, the knife is sharp. That's not to say though, it's a good knife. Zyla, listen close. This is my first knife. I'm not a knife maker. I make no guarantees this won't fall apart on you. If you end up stranded on a desert island with just one thing, this knife might not be your wisest choice. I mean, there's absolutely no reason it's not the best, strongest, sharpest, fastest, smartest, best looking knife on the planet, but on the other hand, I'm out of time. Let's get this off to Zyla. But if you think I'd just send a naked knife off into the world alone, frankly, I'm offended. I also made a sheath. Dang it, I got tomato. Well, it's sort of a sheath. This and a spring clamp? Heck, you could wear it on your belt. How convenient is that? Cut it out of the same wood, did some engraving. I was gonna show you another high-speed bandsaw montage of cutting this out of this wood, but I'll save you a few minutes today. You're welcome. All right, let's see here. Oh, definitely not disintegrate. We want to send current timeline. Let's see, X, Y, L, 
A. I think I'm all set up. Let's hope she's not standing on our doorstep right now, as this could get ugly. Fingers crossed. Happy Maker Secret Santa, Zyla. It didn't turn out exactly as I'd envisioned, but I had a lot of fun building that. I'm gonna miss it. Maybe one day, when there's more time, we'll do another one, step by step. But for now, thanks for what? Oh my. Now who could that be? Oh dear, it's from my secret Santa. What do you think? Should I open it now or wait until... <gasps> what is that? Holiest of mackerels. What is this thing? I'm kind of afraid to touch it. I like pushing buttons when I don't know what they do. Well, hold on. I get the feeling like I could hurt myself with this. This thing came with a letter. Despite my basest of instincts, I should probably read that first. This thing is from Sam, by the way, of Look Mom No Computer. I'm super excited. He's a clever one, that guy. Though, I'm still a bit cautious. We can obviously see the LED spell this old Tony, and quite handsomely, I might add. But part of me is wondering when I turn this thing on if those aren't going to spell something different. Something along the lines of, I told you I'd make you pay. Just kidding. Let me read the letter. Dearest old, please be very careful. Cut only the purple wire. So the letter is absolutely beautiful. Unfortunately, it doesn't say much about what this thing does. Really only to just plug it in and push the button. Eh, what the heck? I trust a total stranger, especially at Christmas. Though I'm sorry to say it appears the plug was damaged in shipping. I'll see what I can do. What? No way. It just dawned on me what this thing is. You know what this, oh, I can't believe it. Until now, I've never actually seen one of these in real life. This, my friends, is an electromechanic. I'm sorry, give me a moment. I'm getting real emotional right. Electromechanical LED chaser. I mean, it used to be an electromechanical light chaser. LEDs weren't really around yet, but I can't tell you how long I've dreamed of. You know what? Hold on a minute. I'm totally being serious right now. I know you don't believe me. Give me just a second. I got to grab my wallet. I've been holding on to this since I was five. See that right there? Electromechanical light chaser. Check that off my list. So Sam actually sent another one of these switches, whatever the heck they are. I'm not even gonna try to count those contacts. But it looks like it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven rows. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, he's got those covered. I think this thing warrants breaking down and seeing how it does what it does. This looks to me like some ancient tech right here. I can't be sure, but I think he's doing like a mechanical multiplexing, if that's the right word. I mean, look at the work he put into this. Holy smokes. Looks like 3D printed mounts. Two of these selector switches things. Probably four months of soldering. A little custom PCB. I mean, would you just look at that? I can't wait to see his build video. I was going to try to guess how many wires this is by counting the LEDs, but, but even they're too many. I think he's addressing the LEDs sort of in an XY grid. If you notice, one of the switches is running faster. Not sure how on earth he did that. Looks like they're the same part number. And that must be running the rows or the columns. There's more of those. And then there's this one that's running a little bit slower that's doing the rows. Though it does the underline last. Check that out. I mean, I guess anything is possible, but imagine just the planning that went into this. And the smell. The smell. Holy smokes. I know that smell. I think these things might be old, maybe like telephone exchange sort of things. I don't know. There's no phone number on there. Anyway, thank you very much again, Sam. I can't wait to watch you dream this up and put it together. 
A special thanks to Ruth, too, of Kids Invent Stuff. She was the mastermind, or at least one of the masterminds behind this whole thing. Definitely dealt with a lot of the headache logistics. To everyone else, the link or links should be down below to the whole Secret Santa build. Builds. I think one should take you to the next, etc., and you'll end up back here if all goes well. In fact, bonus feature, if you watch them all, when you get back here, this video will change to a behind-the-scenes director's cut. Maybe. Not sure. No promises. But there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Happy holidays, everyone, and thanks for watching.